Hey there, it is Irene Lyon. Welcome to this video, to this channel, and to this entire world of nervous system health, healing trauma, and all things neuroplasticity. I wanted to take some time today to connect some dots. And by those dots, I mean the topics of anxiety. I'll explain what that means in a second. Migraine headache, and also lack of safety growing up what we might also term early trauma, developmental trauma. Now, the reason why I wanna break these down a little bit is because for those who are new here, you might not know that these three things all connect. And it's common right now in our traditional kind of medical world, health world, to not connect these dots and understand why or how, let's say migraine headache is connected to anxiety, and how that can be connected to early trauma and things that happen to us when we, are, when we are younger that throw our nervous system into what is called dysregulation. Um, so I'm gonna dive into these things today. I also wanna play a short clip, just 60 seconds from an old video of mine where I break down what is a syndrome. What is a syndrome? The reason why this is important is, be, is because migraine headache and what we would call anxiety disorder are considered, at least in my line of work in this somatic healing world, um, they are considered syndromes, which are a cluster of symptoms. So have a listen, and then I'm gonna break down a little bit of that and these other topics that I wanna bring together and connect. Usually when there's dysregulation, not usually, mostly always, there is a high cycling, if I'm doing this with my hand, of fight, flight, but then there's this clamp of freeze on top of it that's trying to like say, go away, go away, we don't wanna feel you, we don't know what to, we don't know what to do with you, and then the shutdown response is trying to, to keep it down, and what happens, this is a very simple explanation for how um, a chronic illness, a chronic syndrome comes up is the system is trying to make sense of both fight, flight, and freeze being on at the same time, and it can't handle it anymore. And so what it does is it, it literally will pop a symptom in the body that can then create a syndrome. All right, so what I wanna start with is, is actually a quote or a passage that I found in one of my notebooks from a masterclass I did ages ago with Peter Levine. I think I was maybe assisting at this class and it was all around what we would call syndromes. And again, I will list a few. So I mentioned migraine headache, that would be classified as a syndrome in our world. Um, anxiety disorder, depression, IBS, Crohn's, severe PMS, premenstrual syndrome, um, Raynaud's, RSD, fibromyalgia, the list is long. A lot of these chronic conditions that humans live with that are very debilitating. And for many people, they think that these, these syndromes are a lifetime sentence and it's never gonna change. And I know firsthand through working with people all around the world that this stuff can change and we need to be sure to have the right practices, education, and um, we could say just uh, teaching in place so that one can work at healing these conditions that are often thought of as not um, fixable. And so one thing I'm gonna read from Peter's, uh, I think it was just some notes that I, I took. He said, all symptoms, and we could also put in syndromes here, are about fixity. All healing is about moving from fixity to flow. So by fixity, what he means is being fixed in a state of tension, collapse, or a bit of both. If I take this idea again of the autonomic nervous system and our survival physiology, our fight, flight, and freeze, these are the responses that we go into and we feel we can't get out of a situation or if something is really stressful or we're under attack or there's something really bad and scary that happens to us, our system mounts a response to maybe 
engage, if it can't and it doesn't see that that's going to shift things, we might fight, we might flee, and if we can't do any of those, the final option is to shut down, to freeze, and maybe then collapse or even faint and pass out and go unconscious. That's like the extreme example of the nervous system physiology taking care of us in a situation of intense stress. So this idea of from fixity to flow means that we're bringing a person out of that strong hold of autonomic nervous system physiology of fight, flight, freeze. Now, it's very important for me to say that this is not something that happens in the blink of an eye. I cannot give you a nervous system pill, say take one today and tomorrow, call me back at the end of the week, we'll see how it goes. It doesn't work that way. It requires a learning, an apprenticeship, a mastering of our internal physiology. That's another thing to know about healing these syndromes and symptoms um, that I've mentioned is we need to get really good with our interoception. That's something else that I remember Peter saying in class. Uh, he said something along the lines of, we cannot heal a syndrome if we do not master our interoception, which is our perception of our internal environment. Because when we're stuck in so much survival stress, for some of us since we were born or even in utero and even generations before us, if we don't get better at understanding what's in there and being, being more accurate, um, we can't heal these things. So I wanna connect these dots. So I'm gonna first talk about anxiety. I don't love that term. My students know I don't love that term. I replace that term with stored survival stress, fight and flight. It is this sympathetic, this autonomic nervous system, fight, flight, it's called sympathetic nervous system activity that is the heart pounding, the blood pressure going up, the I have to get out of here. It's what we might consider panic, obviously anxiety. I like to say, as I said, survival stress, intense survival stress that something is not right and we got a problem here. So I'm gonna use the term anxiety and survival stress interchangeably, namely, namely fight and flight. Now the other interesting thing with this fight, flight, survival stress is that we can be living in it kind of low level for a long time. Many humans on this planet are living in a state of survival stress, but very functional. And this is where freeze comes in. So freeze, which is sort of not the final endpoint of survival stress physiology, but it's sort of what happens when we realize we can't fight, we can't flee, I better kind of freeze and shut down, go a little numb. If I can't uh, bear that, I might collapse. We can be in a state of what's called functional freeze, functional freeze for a lifetime. I know this because I was living in that state up until kind of 10 years ago, full force in that state, but I was functional, very functional, very able to be in the world, move through the world, travel, create, go through university, have relationships, all of it. Um, and I'll talk about that at another time in another video. Make sure you check out a video I did a little while ago called Functional Freeze Explained. I'll link it near this. That will go into a greater detail around how we might end up in a functional freeze response, one scenario. But let's just say we are in this state, we are in this functional freeze state, but under that is this sympathetic charge, which I just showed in that little 60 second clip video. When we're in that state, there is this fluxing, this moving back and forth between high, high, high fight flight and this high, high, high freeze and they grade at each other. It's like nails on a chalkboard. It's like the gas is on and the brake is on and the engine is smoking because it's not going anywhere. There is a friction in the system. This is that fix it, fixity that Peter Levine was talking about in the quote that I mentioned. It, disrupt, it disrupts the flow. Now, this nervous system physiology situation happens for a lot of reasons, but it can happen due to early trauma. Now, a lot of times there's this thought, early trauma, oh, it's only bad, bad, bad stuff. 
um, abuse, rape, big accidents, that is all true. But for many, that might not have occurred. And we have to also think of things like early surgeries, near-death experiences, like near drowning, near choking, right? Um, seeing something really scary that we can't process, mom and dad fighting all the time, losing a family member when we're really young, um, having to have surgeries when we're really young because maybe something um, didn't go right during childbirth or maybe there was an accident and we had to have a surgery. Maybe we have some kind of um, illness that requires being in a hospital day in and day out with IVs and pokes and prods. Maybe we were born prematurely. This is one that often people don't connect their lifelong anxiety with, the fact that they were born not quite ripe and ready to function on their own automatically. So they had to be in an incubator with tubes and a breathing apparatus and their little body was terrified. Even though they were staying alive, they were under intense fight, flight, stress, and a little bit of that shutdown because they had to just be in this space, basically kind of in solitary confinement. In utero stress is another one. I'm just giving you some examples here. Mom was sick. Maybe mom got into an accident and all the stress chemicals went into baby's system and they got a lot of the adrenaline, the cortisol, but then her demeanor of maybe shutting down and collapsing. So these are just some examples of what early developmental trauma might look like. I have not named all of them. Um, another one I'll mention, dental work. People sometimes forget about this, but the dentist for some kids is really traumatic and stressful because I mean, think about it. You're in this place that's super private and personal in the mouth. You might not understand what's going on. You've got these people around you that you might be being held down and you wanna get out of there, but you can't. So this is a classic example of want to get out, but can't. I wanna fight and I wanna flee, I wanna bite, but I can't. And so, I shut down. So let's just say we leave that situation, we grow up, but we never have anyone help us process and move through these stored survival responses. I'm gonna be very general, but for the most part, none of us, I know I certainly did, didn't, um, none of us had anyone to work with us in the way I might work with an infant or my colleagues might work with an infant after they come out of a real traumatic early situation. Just didn't happen back then. So it's really no one's fault other than the fact that we just didn't know. So let's just say little baby grows up to be a 20 year old and they know they're alive because they're alive. They don't even know that they had that early trauma because no one ever told them, but they have this chronic anxiety that they feel in, in, a, in social situations. Or maybe as soon as they um, walk out the door, they get a little agitated. Or maybe they're sitting at home, chilling and for no reason panic and this survival stress just visits them for no reason. Maybe they wake up in the middle of the night and heart is racing. They think they're going to die. I've done other videos on these topics. I will post them below on why we might wake up this way, these sorts of things. So you know, here they are, 20 years old. It doesn't have to be 20, it could be 15, it could be 55, 65, but for whatever reason, the system is feeling this high level of stress, but they manage it. You know, They know how to work with it, or maybe they have some medication that's more pharmaceutical based. Maybe they use alcohol, maybe they use tobacco, whatever it might be to just soothe the system, but it always pops up again. And so let's just say that's sort of one part of their life. And then they have another part of their life where they get these debilitating migraine headaches and it is really painful. And they see that as a separate problem. They don't understand the connection between the anxiety, i.e. survival stress and that early trauma where it was scary, no one was around and I had to shut down. Now, the thing with migraine headache is that, of course, there can be other reasons for migraine. It could be a food-related thing. It could be something else. I'm not going to get into this, but I've worked with enough people to know, as have my colleagues and the likes of Peter Levine, for example, 
that migraine headache is often a sign of that high level of sympathetic activation, the fight flight. There's what's called a vasoconstriction of the blood vessels that go to the brain and the neck, coupled with a high level of parasympathetic, that's the other branch of the autonomic nervous system, parasympathetic vasodilation. That's where everything gets really open and big. And that dilation is what causes and creates the pain. It's a, it's a fast back and forth between constriction, open. And there are these receptors in our vessels that, that and I'm not gonna get into all the science and all of the anatomy, but they, they sense there's a stretch that's really fast and it's happening like massive swing and that's where the pain comes in. So think about it, tight, 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 open, tight, open. That's also, if I point down to my gut, what occurs in folks who have chronic gut problems, IBS, pain, pain, constipation, diarrhea, constipation, diarrhea, gas, all these sorts of things, bloating. If I go back to that, that idea of fixity to flow, the fixity is in this dysregulation and chaos between the fight, flight, and the freeze. Now, we need to have fight, flight, and freeze, but we don't want them on at the same time and for years and decades on end. And this, my friends, is what creates these syndromes like the migraine headache, like the chronic bowel problems, um, like the anxiety disorder. So this anxiety that I've talked about is in the same boat, at least in my world, my colleagues' world, in the somatic experiencing world, as the migraine headache, as the chronic pain, as the fibromyalgia, as even the autoimmune condition, as the depression. Usually when someone has clusters of these things, there isn't just one thing happening. There are many symptoms happening, but often the dots aren't connected that it is a result of this early trauma or this early dysregulation that happened that never got addressed. So I wanted to just paint that picture to give you this connection between what might seem not connected to early trauma or anxiety, not connected to migraines, but they can be. The way to work with these, but it goes back to those pieces that Peter Levine said, flow. We need to restore more flow to the system. Being able to listen also to our internal physiology, that interception, education. We need to understand, I mean, you just got a little chunk of it, but understand at depth and in and, and deep, deep, non-dumbed down ways, what is happening in the physiology. I've done another video on that. I will also post that below. And then slowly over time, building up this capacity to be with the sensations, to know when this fight flight is high or this freeze is high and work with them so that we can start to pry ourselves out of this survival stress. Now, of course, this is something that requires uh, time and commitment and work. This is what I teach in my program, specifically in the 21 Day Nervous System Tune-Up course and also Smart Body, Smart Mind, which is my 12 week program. Start with one of those, depending on when you're watching this. If you haven't yet begun this apprenticeship and you know that what I'm saying really sounds like you and you have been trying to heal by just focusing on the anxiety or just focusing on the migraines or just focusing on the gut problems or whatever it might be, really stop and pause and ask yourself, this actually, you know, does this sound like me? I think it does. I think there's something here. If you get that hit, there's a gut hit literally that's like, I need to learn and get to know this a bit better and practice, then I really encourage you to check out the programs I've just mentioned. I'll post them all below. You can start the 21 day nervous system tune up at any time. You can also get into all of my free resources that will teach you the theory and give you little audio samplers of how to connect with the body. I also have my drop-in classes that we run once a month. So there's something for everyone. The thing is, is that you begin. The thing is, is that you wanna start connecting these dots for yourself 
and learning and practicing so that you can start to become your own medicine. I hope this has been useful. I hope this has put some dots together, connected some pieces, some light bulbs maybe have gone off in your mind. I thank you for being here and you, we will see you next time.